Good day and welcome to Daily Prayer on Tuesday the 20th of October. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the Senior Pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Thank you for joining me today. Let's bow our heads, shall we, as we remember the presence of God with us as we gather together to pray and to commend ourselves into his care. Some verses from Psalm 119, beginning to read at verse 81. My soul languishes for your salvation. I hope in your word. My eyes fail with watching for your promise. I ask, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wine skin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten your statutes. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The arrogant have dug pitfalls for me. They flout your law. All your commandments are enduring. I am persecuted without cause. Help me. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, spare my life so that I may keep the decrees of your mouth. Thanks be to God for his words. Let's pray together. We thank you, Father, for your gift of perfect love, for our Saviour Jesus Christ. We thank you for all who loyally serve him and through whom your light shines on your world. We thank you for those who, in the name of Christ, seek to improve the plight of the homeless and badly housed. We thank you for young people who share their learning and energy freely through voluntary service at home and abroad. We thank you for organisations which help to relieve suffering and distress in stricken lands. We thank you for missionaries living out your message in the midst of ignorance, fear and disease. And we thank you for all those who freely give time and energy and money to bring comfort, hope and help to those with needs. Father, we thank you that your light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We confess to you, our heavenly and holy Father, our faltering faith, our foolishness in not following our Lord Jesus Christ more closely and our failure in Christian living. We've lost opportunities to help and to heal, to comfort and sustain. And so this morning we ask for your strength and pardon for our continual mistakes. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're reading through the book of Judges at the moment, and today we continue reading through the story of Samson. And we read in chapter 14 of Judges, beginning to read at the first verse. Once Samson went down to Timnah, and at Timnah he saw a Philistine woman. Then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw a Philistine woman at Timnah, now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother said to him, Is there not a woman among your kin or among all our people that you must go to take a wife from the circumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me, because she pleases me. His father and mother did not know that this was from the Lord, for he was seeking a pretext to act against the Philistines. At that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother. When he came to the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion roared at him. The spirit of the Lord rushed on him, and he tore the lion apart barehanded, as one might tear apart a kid. But he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson. After a while he returned to marry her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, 
There was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey. He scraped it out into his hands and went on, eating as he went. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them, and they ate it, but he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the carcass of the lion. His father went down to the woman, and Samson made a feast there, as the young men were accustomed to do. When the people saw him, they brought thirty companions to be with him. Samson said to them, Let me now put a riddle to you. If you can explain it within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty festal garments. But if you cannot explain it to me, then you shall give me thirty linen garments and thirty festal garments. So they said to him, Ask your riddle, let us hear it. He said to them, Out of the eater came something to eat, out of the strong came something sweet. But for three days they could not explain the riddle. On the fourth day they said to Samson's wife, Coax your husband to explain the riddle to us, or we will burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you invited us here to impoverish us? So Samson's wife wept before him, saying, You hate me. You do not really love me. You have asked a riddle of my people, but you have not explained it to me. He said to her, Look, I have not told my father or mother. Why should I tell you? She wept before him. The seven days that their feast lasted, and because she nagged him on the seventh day, he told her. Then she explained the riddle to her people. The men of the town said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, If you had not ploughed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed on him, and he went down to Ashkelon. He killed thirty men of the town, took their spoil, and gave the festal garments to those who had explained the riddle. In hot anger he went back to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. Thanks be to God for his word. So Samson marries a Philistine woman, and that uh, violated his Nazarite oath, it, which obligated him to keep uh, separate from anything that would be designated as unclean. And certainly that sense of uncleanness wasn't a judgment on others. It was um, that he would remain faithful within his own people and seek a wife from within his own people so that actually their faith would not and their practice would not be diluted. Samson says, she pleases me. And so yet again, the pattern in the book of Judges is that so often those who have the Spirit of the Lord upon them seek to please themselves rather than to please the Lord. His gifts are squandered. His gifts are left, as it were, in the dust. Why? Because he is unwilling to listen to the voice of the Lord. And even now, when he goes at the end of our story, uh, down to Ashkelon, the revenge that he exacts is nothing to do with deliverance, as he's originally been given the opportunity by God to do when he was called. No, it's all to do with um, impressive deeds in the eyes of those around him. Samson is unfaithful and ineffective for God, and it's a salutary lesson to us all that if we wish to be used by God, then we have to dedicate ourselves unreservedly to him. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's bring before the Lord our world and ourselves in prayer. Let us pray.
Firstly, today we pray for those who are addicted, whose lives are caught in a tangled web of despair because they are addicts of unhealthy and dangerous habits. We ask that all who seek ways of escape from real life may be kept from easy and evil solutions. Lord, give them courage and insight into their condition. Help them to seek truth, life and salvation and to find their weak wills reinforced by the power of God in Christ. Help us as Christians to recognise those who are desperate, lonely and overwhelmed, that we may offer sympathy and understanding and enter into their feelings of despair, to share them and bring Christ's healing. Help us never to condemn or despise others, since we may not have walked their path nor been consumed with the fierce desires that burn within their flesh and mind. O oh God, help us to stretch out to them our hands of help and healing. Support all who lift up the fallen and cling to the overwhelmed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we continue to pray for the work of BMS World Mission in Afghanistan, today we pray for those who have uh, supported and continue to support maternal health projects. It was in 2018 that BMS launched its, its campaign life's first cry we pray that those who've received training will remember what they've been learnt and be able to put life-saving lessons into action when required lord may this ministry and this movement be part of your redemption for the country of afghanistan lord in your mercy hear our prayer We pray for Christians in Nigeria, particularly those who risk the rejection and even the violence of family and friends if they decide to follow Jesus. We particularly pray for a brother called Sarim, who is unable to complete his degree in engineering because he was forced to flee for his life. We thank you, God, for Sarim's faith and ask that, uh, Lord, you would provide for him practically and spiritually. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves and for those whom we love in a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the Lord guide you and restore you and restore his comfort to you. May the Lord bring praise to your lips. The Lord send you peace wherever you go. And the Lord in his mercy heal you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you. And with those whom you love, and with God's people everywhere, today and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. Please keep safe, please keep well, please keep praying for one another, and if you're able to, please pray for me. Until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye and God bless.